Hi there, my name's Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant at the Royal National ENT Hospital in London. My job on the NHS is to provide care for people with obstructive sleep apnea, but those who have trouble with a CPAP mask or a mandibular advancement device. So what I'm going to do today is continue my series of reviewing devices that help to stop obstructive sleep apnea. And today I'm going to talk about this device, the Inspire device. Now this is another hypoglossal nerve stimulator and if you've seen my channel before you'll see that I've done also one on the Nixawa device so you can compare and contrast those two devices. So just like the last video with the Nixawa device, this Inspire device I'm going to talk about how it works, uh, how it's different from the other devices out there, I'll talk about the clinical evidence, the papers, the research about it and then finally I'll talk about my impressions and my opinions about it. Before we get on to that, please do like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm and building better quality content for the videos here. Uh, if you want to leave comments, please do, and I'll slowly go through them and reply to them uh, within the confines of me being a full-time NHS consultant. So to start with, I'll talk about a little bit of background about sleep apnea. Now, if you already know what sleep apnea is, skip ahead a little bit and I'll start talking about the device there. So sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea is what we're talking about today is when it's very closely related to snoring and when you have loud snoring an awful lot of people with loud snoring have a form of obstructive sleep apnea. This is when you snore so loudly you it stops you breathing at night. It's very hard to see when you're watching someone uh, having sleep apnea because you often can't see it. You do need a sleep study or some other device that watches you sleep at night and so you can pick up these moments where you, you stop breathing, you block off your breathing and your oxygen levels drop a little bit. And that happens repeatedly overnight. So that's what sleep apnea is. It's repeated blockage of your airway at night. So if you'd like a little bit more information about obstructive sleep apnea, there are other videos and I'll try and make a link somewhere so you can see uh, those videos that tell you more about obstructive sleep apnea. So hypoglossal nerve stimulators work on a nerve called the hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal nerve are two nerves that come down from the brain underneath your tongue here and they go into your tongue. That's why it's called hypoglossal. Hypo means underneath, glossal means tongue in Latin and, and it stimulates the tongue. If you can stimulate this hypoglossal nerve at just the right point, it brings your tongue out. So it brings your tongue forward. And this is important in obstructive sleep apnea because some people have mainly a tongue-based problem. So when you're lying in bed at night and you're snoring and getting sleep apnea, sometimes the tongue falls back. So and your tongue falls back, blocks off your breathing and then gives you an apnea. An apnea is when you completely stop breathing. And by bringing the tongue forward with this uh, stimulator, by activating that hypoglossal nerve, it brings the tongue forward and then you don't have the obstruction. So it's a bit like your tongue falling back like this and you're bringing the tongue forward so you can breathe down that area there. So the way that this Inspire device works is that it works similar to a pacemaker. What it does is it sits just about here on your chest and there's a wire that comes up here into your neck and goes to your hypoglossal nerve as it's going into your tongue. And then it stimulates that hypoglossal nerve to bring your tongue forward. Obviously this only happens at night. The battery which is contained within this thing, which is very small, you can see it's quite thin, you can hardly notice it if it's underneath uh, the, the muscles and the skin around your chest. How it works is that this battery constantly stimulates off and on the back of your tongue. So it comes forward and comes back. The way it works out when to bring the tongue forward is that it has another wire that comes out of here and goes into your chest. So this is different, very different from the um, Nixor device. So this wire goes into your chest near your lung and the idea behind that wire is it senses when you are breathing. So when you breathe, you take a breath in, the body knows or the device, the Inspire device knows that you're going to try and breathe in through your mouth and that's when it tells the tongue to move forward to get it out of the way so you can take that breath. And when you're not breathing in, it relaxes so your tongue can flop back a little bit. So in this way, the Inspire device synchronizes with your breathing so that when you are breathing, it opens the airway just at the right time for you to breathe. So obviously you only need this uh, Inspire device to work when you're sleeping, when, you, when you're in bed, so, or when you have obstructive sleep apnea. So there is a controller that you can use which you put on, you press the button, you turn it on. That's how it works. You don't, it's not on all the time, it's only when you sleep. And you can turn it on in the middle of the night and go to sleep. 
The great thing about this controller is that you can also increase or decrease how much stimulation you need. So I guess sometimes if you go to bed and you find, oh, I've still got the same symptoms of, of obstructive sleep apnea, you can turn it up a little bit. And sometimes it goes, oh, actually, this is waking me up at night. You can turn it down a little bit. So there is some control you have here. This isn't actually the real device. This is a spongy thing, but it, uh, it's, it serves as a way of uh, understanding what it looks like. I think another big advantage of the Inspire device is that it has an awful lot of evidence behind it, clinical evidence, lots of trial data behind it. The hypoglossal nerve industry was started with the Inspire device. Back in 2014, the STAR trial was the first trial that came out about these devices. Uh, it was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is probably the best journal around. And what they found there was in 126 people, they found that their AHI dropped down from 29.3 down to 9. I had to look at the numbers there, sorry. Now, if you don't know what AHI is, AHI is apnea hypopnea index. That means the number of times that you stop breathing every hour on average. So these people were stopping breathing approximately 25 times an hour. And after using this device, after 12 months, even after 12 months, they were still bringing their number of times they stopped breathing down to 9 rather than 25. That's a huge improvement. That's the sort of difference you'd expect to see wearing the CPAP mask. And just to prove that it works, after 12 months, they took 46 people who did very well with the implant. And what they said to them is that half of you, 23 of you, were going to turn off the device for one week just to see if things were to change. And indeed, those 23 that didn't have their device on, their sleep apnea came back. And all the people who had their device still on, their sleep apnea stayed down. After a week, when the, uh, the Inspire devices were turned back on again, their levels dropped back down to about 9 again, or 8.9. So that was the first trial done back in 2014. There have been lots of trials since, and a big one called the ADHERE trial um, is one that looks at about 500 and 508 patients. And those 508 patients have been followed through all those years, up to about five years. We're using different devices as well, so the uh, M-Thera device or the uh, Inspire device. So looking at the side effects from this device, there are very few. 98% of people have no problems whatsoever or didn't report anything really bad. There were two people that had a blood clot occurring just at the point where uh, they put the tunnel in. So what I mean by that is that this Inspire device is here and they need to get the wire up to there. So you need to make a tunnel up there and sometimes you can uh, damage a blood vessel and that causes a little bleed. So nothing serious but sometimes that bleed has to be stopped and you need another operation to stop it. Uh, another thing that can happen is you can get a collection of fluid in that area. Again, normally you just leave it, sometimes you need to drain that fluid away. There were also some problems with the tongue area as well. One person noticed that the tongue didn't seem to feel quite right, didn't move properly and three people noticed that they found it difficult to speak properly or swallow properly. That was very transient, it means it only lasted for a short time. Some of the other side effects are to do with the stimulation of the tongue. 8% of people noticed problems initially. And what that means is that sometimes the tongue was shifted so much at night, it woke people up and therefore you needed to recalibrate or, re or change the stimulation to stop people from waking up at night. So it caused arousals at night. Uh, which is the exact opposite of what you want. Sleep apnea causes you to wake up. You don't want the same thing to happen because of this treatment. Uh, other things that can happen is that because the uh, Inspire device only stimulates one nerve, there is more of a chance of the tongue twisting around in the mouth. And when you twist your tongue around, it can sometimes cause abrasions along the teeth. The same thing can happen with the Nixwood device, which stimulates both of the nerves. But because it's only stimulating one, I think it does twist around a little bit and that can wake people up and cause abrasions along the tongue. I think looking at these results from the ADIA trial, it is quite interesting to note that there were no infections. That's quite rare because a lot of these devices do get infected at least 1%. And also none of these devices needed to be removed. It never failed, which is an excellent thing. What is a problem with these um, devices, if you can imagine, this is a battery. The Nixwood device doesn't have a battery. So it sits there. You don't have to charge it. But what you do need to do is that you need to remove and replace the battery side of this every 10 years or so. Um, hopefully, with time, they can get a rechargeable one where you can just charge it up every, say, six months or something. If Tesla can do it, I'm sure um, Nixwood and uh, Inspire can do something similar. But at the moment, you need to make a cut, 
after 10 years, remove the battery and then replace it again. And then you're, uh, you've got another 10 years worth out of it. So, uh, as I said in the beginning, the, the, the Inspire device has a fantastic amount of evidence behind it. In fact, about five or 6,000 of these have been implanted, mainly in Germany and America. So it's well tested, it's been around the longest, it's started off everything. So in terms of getting a good product that everyone is sure about, this would be the one to go for. I should, however, warn people that it's not for everyone. Not everyone has a uh, just a, a tongue-based problem. Some people have a lateral wall problem or a tonsil problem or some other problem. Uh, and so the people who have a purely tongue problem, that's what the Inspire device will work on. It won't work on tonsils. Uh, if, if you have a tonsil problem, really, just have your tonsils out. If you have a lateral wall problem, that's the major problem. If you have a lateral wall problem, that means the back wall of your throat collapsing in like that. So it's not the tongue falling in like this, it's the back wall collapsing. And if that happens, this device doesn't really help those people at all. In fact, they're excluded from ever getting it. So the most important thing is knowing that this is the right thing for you. And if it is the right thing and you're um, bad enough to have this device, hopefully we can provide this free on the NHS. And I'm working with the people and the managers and the staff at the uh, Royal National ear and Hospital in London. It's near the Euston or Warren Street area. Um, and we're trying to make this available for everyone. Now, it is quite difficult. It's a very expensive device. It's 23 or 25 something thousand pounds. And as you can imagine, the NHS uh, hasn't got uh, huge amounts of money. So we need to be very careful. But we know it works. And we know it helps a lot of people. So rather than this just being a private thing, we want to be available to all, a bit like in America with their insurance companies, but available on the NHS because we know it works. If you're interested in this, please do ask your GP to send you to me at the Royal National ENT Hospital in London. It's a part of UCL, University College London Hospitals. And hopefully we can get this going as quickly as possible to serve uh, as wide a community as possible around the whole of the United Kingdom. So in conclusion, I think the Inspire device is fantastic. It's great. It's got lots of clinical data behind it. I like the fact that you can control it. Uh, you can put it up and down so you don't have to come back to see me or see one of the team to change the settings slightly. It can be done just at home. Um, it has a lot of evidence behind it. It's quite small. It works for 10 years. That's not too bad just to have a small operation, 20 minute operation to change your battery. You don't have to keep charging anything. That's the other thing about it. It only stimulates one side. So some people say that actually it'd be better to have it on both sides, but that makes it quite difficult in terms of turning your neck, as you can imagine, with two wires going across. But it does work. We know from the data that just stimulating one side still works. So I'll wrap up now. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do like and subscribe to this video and my channel. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And thank you again very much for watching.